What's up folks? So we're getting the cart before the horse a little bit on the uh, technological side of things with cameras and microphones and stuff like that. Um, until we get that figured out, just gonna make do with the iPhone that we're currently recording on. And uh, so this is day one, here we go. Got the trailers unstacked earlier this week. Did have a video on that, but you know, nothing, nothing too exciting and nothing that's probably gonna help you out very much. But now's where the fun stuff starts. So what we're working with here, we've got these 28 foot trailers, some custom made for tiny homes from Tiny Home Basics, uh, more specifically the trailer shop. But what these are, so these are designed specifically to build a tiny home on top of. They've got uh, our flush cross members here. So our subfloor is actually gonna sit directly on the metal of the trailer. What we're doing today is installing the flashing underneath the trailer. It's gonna come up under here to the bottom of these members and seal it off. And what that's gonna do is give us a surface to lay in our insulation foam that we'll be doing on the next video. Uh, it's a pretty simple process here. We've just got several rolls of this strip sheeting. We're gonna come through with self-tapping little screws and attach this to the bottom. There's no real waterproofing or anything required. All it really is is a surface under there for those insulation boards. You can do a spray foam insulation from the bottom. If you just had your subfloor on top of here and left the bottom open, you can come in and get the spray foam there. But we're gonna go ahead and use that foam board insulation. I think that's gonna be a little bit easier for this process. Pretty simple. I'll give you some close-ups of what we're doing and uh, we'll get rolling. Get a little time-lapse going and hopefully tell you everything you need to know. All right, I'm gonna try to hold the camera steady for y'all. I'll do my best. Quick little overview of the trailers from Tiny House Basics. I will say I didn't do my research. I didn't do too much research before ordering these. A um, little bit of forethought would have been good. They do have an option to buy these with the flashing already welded on and painted to match, which would have been nice and really honestly should have gone with that option. Um, at the time of ordering the trailers, we didn't know what our floor plan was gonna be. So we just got standard positions on these anchoring bolts. A lot of those are gonna have to move um, and that's okay, but we kind of knew that going in. But if you do know your floor plan, you actually do have the option to have them position these wherever you need them specifically. And you can also add as many scissor jacks as you want. They've got different actual options to adjust your height a little bit. And uh, just, just a really great company, really easy to work with. Shout out to Josh over there at Tiny House Basics. He's, he's been there to answer a question every time I've had it. These things came in fast. They came in as expected. And that's all I can really say about the trailers. Um, they're, they're looking fantastic. One thing that they do differently, you'll see that there's no bed here, like a lot of the tiny home trailers have where you build your subfloor in the bed, you build your own joists and stuff. These are actually, these joists are actually gonna act as our subfloor support. So like I said, the subfloor is gonna go directly on those. This flashing is gonna go underneath these, uh, wherever my hand is, underneath these two by four members. That's gonna allow us to get two layers of two inch thick um, insulation. To get that R value you need, the uh, NOAA certification I think requires 13 and uh, I believe these are 10 per layer, so it'll be R20 total, so more than enough. And uh, yeah, here's our flashing. These are 20 inch wide sheets that we'll be rolling and we'll, you know, we'll have to cut them around the fenders and stuff like that. But uh, like I said, it's a pretty simple process. And without further ado, I'm gonna set this camera back up, get on my back on the ground and start slinging some screws. All right, so full transparency as we will try to continue to be throughout this entire process. As I will tell you a thousand times, I haven't done this before. I've done a little bit of home renovation work, um, some framing and stuff like that. Certainly never built a house, certainly never built a tiny house, and I uh, haven't messed with trailer foundations and stuff like that. So this kind of thing is going to happen a lot. I bought these uh, self-drilling screws that are obviously not the right thing. Once they get in and a couple of threads catch, they're just breaking off. So I'm gonna run to the box store, get some better screws, and uh, we'll get back to it. Like I said, this is gonna be a very common occurrence, so I will try to let you know 
every time that I choose the wrong thing and I'll be sure to put in exactly what I'm using for each step that I find that does work. Won't be putting the link for these in the bio. <laughs> All right, so I had a little more trial and error while I was getting started and uh, needed my phone. So I took the tripod down and maybe we'll maybe we'll pick up with the time lapse stuff. But uh, I'll show you what we're what I got going on here. I've got one strip of the flashing going in and I kind of had an outstanding question, but I really wanted to just go ahead and get started while I could was whether or not this flashing had to be full coverage or just enough to support my foam boards because the flashing is not really doing anything other than supporting the foam boards. I finally got hold of the uh, inspect one of the inspectors over at NOAA. And uh, if I have not talked about NOAA yet, by the time you see this, I will. And if I have already, go back and look at that. But basically what I found out was it really does just need to support it. Um, this stuff is a bitch and a half to get on. So, I'm gonna do a strip here and then do a strip like that on the other side. That's gonna be enough because I'm running a solid foam board in each one of these. So that's gonna be plenty to hold that up. We'll go seal the foam board with a gap filler. Um, there will be a video on that. And uh, that's gonna save me a lot of work and save me a lot of time. Um, just something, I, it wasn't easy to find an answer for. So hopefully if you're working with a trailer like this and you're putting your own flashing on, and you're using foam board, uh, just know that you don't have to cover the entire thing, which is really good. All right, now show you what I actually found that works. If I can turn this thing around. I don't think I can turn it around. I'll cut to the next clip. So as you can see, it does not look fantastic, but it is going to serve the purpose and the rest of it's gonna look a lot better than the beginning did had a box to cut around and certainly going to clean all that up but uh what i found step over here so if you take a long board and clamp it up kind of pull all this stuff as tight as you can get it and then come in just work your way down with that method put your put your fasteners in and then keep working down with your clamped board as you can see, this section looks much better than that section. You can kind of see about here is where I figured that out. But uh, that's what we're going to do. So I will probably just skip the whole time lapse thing because I'm having a time with this. And uh, show you all what it looks like once we get it all buttoned up. So... So that is a wrap on the flashing on the first trailer. Um, once I figured it out, it really wasn't that bad. Once I kind of got my system going, I think that run there took about an hour start to finish. So, you know, probably a good half day. If you know what you're doing and you know what, what fasteners, you're not making any extra Home Depot runs or anything like that. Probably about four hours to, to knock out of each trailer. So not terrible, but like I said, I would highly recommend getting the flashing pre-installed if that's an option with your trailer manufacturer because uh, it's quite a headache. Upside down work is not fun, laying on your back, too much more of it. Might have to cut the main off uh, started getting in the way. But like I said, got it done. I will uh, give a quick overview and then we'll run through, uh, probably just do a slide that shows you know what materials we used here and how much how much everything costs and uh, we'll kind of keep a running tab on how much we've spent per trailer just because that's 
really good information to have. I'll do a quick overview of this and uh, we'll, we'll wrap it. So here we are, we got the ugly section and then this one really started to clean up and look halfway decent through the end. And then that side looks a whole lot better. Still some wobble, of course, but you know, nobody's perfect. And since this is not really sealing anything, it's just gonna support that insulation. Not a huge deal. Um, also, you're not gonna be able to see it. So that's that's kind of the biggest part there. Uh, give another quick look at that setup if you wanted to see that again. Basically running that board down, just clamping it up, position, you know, position the sheet where you want it, clamp it, and then you can go in and put your fasteners. I did two screws, bolts, whatever, in each one. Um, so that'll be fully supported and we will get started on the second one. One little note to add is we are gonna insulate these as well. Um, but what I'm gonna do with those is get some uh, ductwork strapping, which is basically this, but, but thinner and already has holes in it. And we'll put that up to support the insulation in those, but it's gonna work the same way. And then our subfloor is gonna go fully edge to edge so that's a wrap on that we will get you uh get you some links and costs and all that fun stuff that the youtubers are supposed to do so here we go